So here's the pump I got. Um, but I got it from a Ford dealership in Florida because they had it $200 cheaper than any other Ford dealer, including the one here in town. Um, this is the valve that goes on top. Um, let's see, where's the part number? That's the part number, the control valve. But turns out the pump has it on it already, so I don't need to spend that $200. So here's the new pump. It doesn't say it's remanufactured anywhere on it. So if you're looking at a site where they're selling a remanufactured pump for $1,000, it's probably better to order it from a Ford dealership for $1,000 or from uh, Lakeland Ford for $800. It's down in Florida. So now I'm going to put this one in. It's nice because this one came already mostly prime, or timed. That little pin goes straight up and down with the cylinder, and that's how it has to go in with the gear on. So that should make it a little easier so I don't have to try and crank or turn the shaft when it's in there to get it to line up properly as long as I have it close enough that the gears match up. Okay, I'll try and get a little better shot of putting this in. I soaked up all the diesel fuel down here in the valley and the dirt. Okay, I got the shaft to go into the hole. Now I just have to get the bolts on. Okay, now the pump is in position, so I can put the gear on. Maybe I'll put the nuts on first. Dirty one, ouch! Dirty one at the bottom. Okay, now those are finger tight. Again, the pump gear with the timing marks. So this goes straight up and down and the key is at the top. Oops, the, this is for the... Okay, then we'll go down and see if we got the line, marks lined up. Looks like we're off a little bit. So it looks like we need to turn it clockwise a tiny bit. Okay, now 
I got the timing mark mostly straight up and down and that key mostly straight up and down. So I'll see if I can get the pump on now. Still off a little bit. There we go. Perfect. I got the two and the one lined up and it's in the key. Yep, 27 millimeter fits perfect. impact wrench on it just to make sure I get it tightened without having to hold the crank. Okay, there I got the nut on and I still am aligned properly there. So I'm all set. Okay, now I got the pump back in. I put the nut on and torque and tighten it down with the impact wrench. And now I gotta put the tighten up the nuts, put the bracket the bracket back on, and then put the hose and tubes back on. So these are 13 millimeter. Putting the bracket back on. The back takes the two single washer inch long bolts. Tighten them with an 8 millimeter socket as short as possible. Now I'll put the two injector hoses back on. Tighten them with a 19. The hose retainer bracket goes back on with one of these bolts right there. And it's an eight millimeter. Just tighten up the nut and the top to hold them together securely. And the inlet and outlet tubes go down on the top. Not sure what bolt that is. The inlet outlet tubes go back in with the two inch long no washer, except for the head flange bolt. Goes 
back in. Slide the lock mechanism back over. I just put in the bolt for the inlet and return tube and the fastener on this side and then I'll work on the one on the other side. Right down here is another hold down for the injector tubes. It uses this bolt and it goes just right in there and then the electrical wire goes on top of it. I had to run and grab my 13 millimeter deep well socket. Okay, once you get that in, then the electrical has a plug on the end of it that just slides down over the bolt to hold that in place. There's a bolt right back here. It just takes one of these short bolts. an impossible bolt to reach so it just takes forever. Good thing they didn't use a short one. So I got the vacuum pump and I got a new gasket off Amazon. Molly gasket, however you pronounce it. It's nice, it's got little keepers that you can fold down to hold it in place when you put it on. And I'm gonna assume that it uses my greasiest bolts. Then since these bolts come loose, I'm going to use some of my really, really old Loctite. I think it used to be a bright red color, but it's not anymore. So it goes on in this orientation with the, <clears throat> with the tube to the driver's side. And then Got to hope to get this hooked up to the other one. Turns out if you turn that, it's got oil in it. <clears throat> it squirts out everywhere.
the vacuum pump is on. Okay, new pump is in. Um, the bolts are back in for holding the pipes in place. That one down there, I gotta put the little plastic clip back on. And that one over there. And then I put the cold air or hot air pipe back on. Got the vacuum tube back in over here to go on the lower intake manifold. Got the vacuum pump back on with the hose. So now I'm ready to put the fan back in and then put the lower intake manifold on. Okay, the fan pulley takes these five long bolts. So, and it goes down here on the front in these bosses. So I'll see if I can get it lined up and stuck on. millimeter socket part is that the smooth pulleys get the back side of the belt and the groove pulleys get the groove the knee side of the belt so. and I know it goes down over the crank and then up that pulley over, over the tensioner pulley down and around the AC pulley. Now, what can be 
scene down here. I'm gonna put the fan back on. And the bracket, the bracket for the wiring harness goes under this pulley bolt here, the second one from the top on the driver's side. that goes to a short harness that goes to another connector on the fan itself. That's kind of silly. That bolt right there has the bracket that holds the wires in place. Looks like I'm ready to put the lower portion of the intake manifold in. A tip I saw on a Ford, on a Ford YouTube video on replacing the exhaust manifold gaskets and taking the turbo out and stuff was when you're putting the lower intake manifold back in, it's hard to get these two gaskets lined up with each other. So if you loosen the rear hose clamp on the upper tube, you can push it back on there all the way like that so that, you, so that it's flush and then when you are putting the manifold in you only have to stick the bottom one in then you can pull the top one forward that now the back one is in place so I can put bolts in the really long one goes here and the shorter two go on the other side right here Then I can tighten up that lower clamp. And then I can pull this hose forward, maybe.
there we go. And then tighten up both those hose clamps. millimeter socket appears to fit on these hose clamps really nicely. Beats the flathead screwdriver. And a 10 millimeter socket for the manifold bolts. This large bolt goes to hold the wiring harness in place. It's a 10 millimeter. Looks like the EGR tube should go on next. But first I'll put this floppy hose on. Spot here. Should have probably put this on before. And then that you push it on and then this ring has to twist so that it locks into place, hopefully. Oh, great. Not twisting it back caused it to deform and not lock in place. Maybe I got them stretched back enough to stay. That's bad. 
Okay, here's to go this way. And then it takes the dark bolts. Where is it? Okay, so the O2 sensor or whatever it is sticks out the front and is on the lower side of it, on the head side. And the connector goes on this one down here. I don't know where it plugs in. Keep it secure. Seems like it goes there, but that's really hard. body plug okay so now I'll put the cold side and the hot side intake pipes on uh, make sure you take out rags if you use them that would be frustrating eleven millimeter socket on the hose clamp Don't forget to put the star clip, the flower clip on. And then the post, or the pipe, into wire. Just before the fuel pump went out, I had to replace the cold side pipe because this plastic here, over time, gets brittle and will eventually blow a hole in it. And then you are running with no turbo. It's no fun, it's 
especially when pulling a trailer in the middle of nowhere. So check that and if possible replace it with an aftermarket piece. I will be doing that eventually. I don't know why they made the hot side out of steel and the cold side out of rigidized rubber. Doesn't make any sense to me. are on. Now I can get the intake manifold. I got the fancy Felpro gasket set for it. nub on it right there that goes in the little slot like it needs to go on a certain direction but maybe that helps pull it out easier Okay, sorry about that, I lost, I ran out of video card and didn't know where to sit. So now I'll put the vacuum line on. That goes right across here and down onto the plug right there. Coming up from the vacuum pump. Almost forgot though intake plug so you can see this
dipstick tubes in these Okay, back here, we got the dipstick stick to bolt down. The bolt with the big washer on it. Let's see if I can get at this in the camera. The bolt with the big washer goes on the transmission dipstick, holding it to the oil dipstick. Last but not least, the last bolt goes on the coolant line that you have to remove to get that pipe to move a little bit to get the intake manifold out. Now to stick this down in there, it's too far to reach, but the bolt just pops out of the socket. So if you take a rag, and put the socket in with the rag on it, then the bolt stays in the socket and you can stick it down in there. Okay, now I have everything back together. So I have to prime the fuel by turning the key to the on position and then off again six times or more. So I'm gonna do that now.
here are all the tools that I needed to do the job. Um, first a screwdriver just for prying on things and stuff. A 19 millimeter end wrench. Some 3 8 drive sockets. 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and a 13 millimeter deep with various extensions. And then a couple wobblies. A quarter inch drive with a long extension and a short 8 millimeter, a long 8 millimeter, and a long 10 millimeter half inch drive. Um, the adapter made it easier to adjust the tensioner on the belt because it gave a little bit of an extension and a longer ratchet arm. A 22 millimeter socket and then an extension and an 18 millimeter socket, a couple pliers for undoing hose clamps and then a impact wrench either electric or pneumatic or whatever you can find with a 27 millimeter a hammer probably don't need that the crowbar to pry on the pulley and then some type of device to uh, undo the, the fan I chose this impact wrench with the bar and the ratchet otherwise you could do a chisel on an impact hammer like this so this pounds on it and bounces it in and out so that's it for the tools last time I used a lot more tools the first time than I did this time but I kept track just to make sure I had exact